Hello everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian Christy here. We've reached another Friday, so of course I have another Film Rec Friday ready for everybody out there. Now, August is officially National Dog Month, and while I do happen to be more of a cat person, I do also really love dogs, especially dogs with those big, oversized personalities, the ones that are always raring to go, uh, and are kind of ridiculous and wonderful all rolled into one, especially when they're teeny tiny dogs that are like that. I kind of just love the weird juxtaposition of such a big personality shoved into such a tiny, tiny body. Anyway, I thought why not kick off this month with a couple of really exceptional dog movie recommendations with dogs that feature personalities like that, full of antics and ridiculousness and just a lot of fun. Uh, so like every other week, both of these recommendations are available entirely for free with the use of your Mylan Berlin library card. So without any further ado, let's get to the recs. Okay, so my first recommendation is available on DVD via our Clevenet service, and that is 2000's Best in Show. Now, Best in Show is one of Christopher Guest's phenomenal, phenomenal mockumentary style films, and he just does these movies so, so well. I actually think Best in Show is one of his two best um mockumentaries, the other being Waiting for Guffman, which I know I've mentioned before, and I will mention again at some point. Anyway, Best in Show is this fantastic, fantastic mockumentary, uh, ad-libbed comedy film all about a group of people who are all competing in the essentially the Westminster Dog Show. They obviously don't call it the Westminster Dog Show, but that's what it is. Uh, and they're just the people and the dogs are so well paired. I know that this is a comedy and it's a, a tour de force display of improv acting. Like these people are incredible. Um, as, just as far as the movie style goes, uh, guest will give people like a basic plot line to follow, but they are ad libbing the vast majority of every scene. And doing that and doing it well and doing it in a way that you still get character arc from scene to scene to scene is insanely difficult to do. I come from a performance background. It's hard enough to do that with a script where you can plot out everything and beats, but it's so much more challenging to stay in the moment and do these things. And it's especially challenging when you're doing it with people who are insanely funny. Um, because breaking character is not something you want to do, obviously. But how do you keep from breaking character in a scene where people are saying the most incredibly outrageous things with a complete straight face and utter dedication? I just, I don't even know. Anyway, Best in Show follows these different individuals and couples as they compete uh, in this hotshot dog show. And we get to know the couples just as much as we get to know the dogs, of course. And it mimics so many real dog show documentaries that I've seen that it it's a little bit eerie, but in the best kind of way. Um, they clearly have done their research. They have absolutely seen these people on screen before who have done and said these things and had these behaviors. And you've also seen how they interact with their pets and it's so perfectly done. And it's still funny. It's still like genuinely hilarious. And who knew that a dog show mockumentary could do that? Um, you have couples that you will end up identifying more as the couple of the, um, Westie, the guy who has the hound dog, the couple that has the incredibly fabulous um, Shih Tzu, always incredibly well coiffed. Um, it's it's just just so much fun. Like that's the whole thing with these movies that Guest does. They are always so funny and entertaining and enjoyable. It is funny. And yes, it's a mockumentary. So it's making pointed jabs at these different industries or topics that he chooses to lampoon, but at no time does it ever feel mean-spirited. I really think that there are actually moments 
especially in Best in Show, where it's almost a little bit inspiring and you kind of love the characters and you're rooting for them because it could easily devolve into something that's just making fun of people who are so invested in their pets or so invested in the competition that like Westminster style thing goes. And it, it doesn't end up being that. And, and I still have yet to figure out how it manages to stay nuanced in that regard. Um, also how none of the characters is ever just some flatline caricature of a person. They're, they are still, despite being created via improv, very full fleshed and real individuals. They're hilarious and absolutely ridiculous in some cases, but they, they do have backstory. They do have a legitimate past that you can tell the actor is like building off of. Um, and that's, and that's, again, a testament to just how talented these people are. And it is a ridiculous cast. You have Catherine O'Hara and Eugene Levy as a couple. Um, Levy is incredibly nerdy and very uncomfortable in his own skin. And O'Hara plays his wife, and she has definitely led a very free past. Um, and that's one of the gags in the whole film. I don't want to... It, that's not a spoiler, but like the recurrent theme <laughs> is, um, in any case, the two of them work so well off of one another and you really do root for them both as the owners of this little Westie and as a couple, you, you want them to continue to be happy and so cute together because they, they bizarrely are. Or the fabulous Michael McKean is just an amazing, amazing performer in everything. Uh, and he is the owner, one of the co-owners of this Shih Tzu and he and his partner, they're just, they're just this adorable, adorable couple in, and, and you don't get like a huge amount of conflict, but you, you do get the sense that they're a very real couple. And I have plenty of friends who are the same, the same kind of couple. Like the, the bickering is never mean spirited. It's always just like, it's just fun. And, you know, you don't have to have the couples that are always at odds, which we do have in this. We have Michael Hitchcock and Parker Posey playing this very emotionally challenged duo. But they also blend so well together because they are in so many ways absolutely perfect together. And, and again, it's one of those things where you know, it's amazing to think that these are all developed off the cuff. Um, and yes, I'm sure there were scene after scene after scene of practice and rehearsal and retakes, but the fact that they get there at any point is amazing to me. Um, J Jane Lynch and Jennifer Coolidge play another duo. Um, Jane Lynch is the dog trainer and shower of uh, Jennifer Coolidge, who has this incredibly frou-frou, uh, high maintenance poodle, man, this thing is just dolled up to high heaven every second of the day. And it, it and the two have a, an interesting rapport. One is the dog trainer and the other is simply the owner and, and they play off of one another very, very well. And that's also hilarious. I mean, the whole show is just amazingly funny, incredibly well done, so well directed, well acted. I mean, it's just fantastic movie. Um, if you happen to like dogs, that is just a bonus because the dogs, as I mentioned, pair so well with each couple or individual, like it's meant to be. <laughs> so yeah, if you are looking for something really, really funny, uh, with a lot of really brilliant performances, uh, incredible, uh, directing because it does take a lot to put these scenes together. Uh, and just some super cute dogs, like super cute dogs. And if you, and, and it's just a bonus, if you happen to be aware of the whole dog show circuit, you absolutely have to watch Best in Show. It's one of my favorite films of all time in general, but definitely one of my favorite mockumentaries. Um, and just a masterclass in sort of showing how that kind of film works. So yeah, definitely make sure you make time for Best in Show. It is a fantastic, fantastic movie. Must watch.
Okay, my other recommendation for this week is also available via Clevenet, and it's on both DVD and Blu-ray, and that is 2016's The Secret Life of Pets. Now, this is one of those computer animated features that came out when it felt like every animated feature felt a little bit the same, but there was something just a little bit different about this one, a little bit special. And I don't know if that's the whole warm and fuzzy glow that most movies about pets have, but there really is something quite charming about Secret Life of Pets. I've watched it multiple times <laughs> uh, and I always seem to find something different to really enjoy about it. And I foresee myself watching it again in the future at some point and finding something else that I really like. And it's not every family film that you can do that with. I mean, it, it just really isn't. There's some, there, there are a lot of family movies that are, while amazing and multifaceted, really are pretty surface level. This is an amazing film, but you're not going to be able to pick it apart in the same way. And, and th there really are some quite interesting little bits and pieces that make up Secret Life of Pets. Anyway, Secret Life of Pets follows a group of incredibly pampered animals. Uh, they're all living in New York City in this one particular apartment building. Um, we we're primarily uh, focusing on dogs in this one, but there are tons of other animals as well. Um, some of the other pampered pets include uh, a canary. A <laughs> this is the way it describes it, uh, a morbidly obese cat. <laughs> and it's voiced by Lake Bell, who I absolutely adore. She's a great actress. Um, and uh, several other little random uh, characters, all of whom are the most privileged of privileged pets um, in the best way. I mean, we all love our pets. I'm never going to knock somebody who treats their pet well. But man, these pets are living the life. Uh, but they all have really, really distinct personalities. Um, we get this lovely little montage to towards the beginning of the film that sort of really highlights that and how they are all, while, while domesticate, domesticated pets, very much individuals and, and some are more ridiculous than others, but it's, it's, it, it, it's really nice to see that little bit fleshed out at the beginning. Uh, and our primary, uh, character, our main is Max, this, you know, happy-go-lucky Jack Russell Terrier, whose life is so warm and full because he absolutely loves his owner and his owner absolutely loves him until she gets a second dog. Um, and it's, it's kind of, you know, a classic trope. Anyone new coming in, whether we're talking about uh, pets or we're talking about toys from Toy Story, you know, that struggle between the, the two... Um, characters is always really, really fun to watch unfold. Uh, whether we're talking about animated features or live action, I mean, that's just a common trope that's it, it very much enjoyable that you can build a lot off of. Um, anyway, uh, you've got Max the Jack Russell Terrier, and suddenly there's Duke, this big, shaggy, I think it's a Newfoundland, um, who has come into his territory and is in general not really interested in taking over or anything, but Max sees it that way. So there's a lot of headbutting. And we end up with the two of them getting into it. And so they end up unable to be at the apartment and they're on the street. Um, when they uncover this huge underground life of, um, forgotten or abandoned pets and it's their interaction with those pets that just sort of makes the movie. Uh, it's especially fabulous because the leader of these pets, a fluffy white bunny, is played by Kevin Hart. And Kevin Hart is going to be Kevin Hart no matter what kind of character he's playing. You know, it doesn't matter if it's live action, animated, if it's like some anthropomorphized bunny or what, 
it's going to be Kevin Hart and it is glorious. He does do an incredible job with it. I, I enjoy it thoroughly. Um, and they're like his, some of his performance bits are some of the ones that I go back to. And I'm like, I had missed that the first time that joke just went and I appreciate it all the more. Uh, and that's the other thing. So sometimes I find it kind of odd and jarring when a film is made on such clear two levels, one for kids and one for adults. But this one, the jokes are really funny no matter what. It doesn't have to, they work on multiple levels. The jokes aren't just for adults or just for kids. Some of the, many of the jokes are there for both and it will land one way if you interpret it one way like a kid would and then an entirely different way if you interpret it as an adult would and it is fantastic. And there's so many moments that absolutely land that way. And I am here for it. And you should be too, because that is like a hallmark of excellent, excellent writing and really well done um, performance. And a lot of Hart's um, lines are that way. Um, as are, you know, Max and Dukes and everybody else, but his standout as such. Um, and then it becomes this whole other battle between um, Max and Duke and Snowball and his group of abandoned pets. And, and we get to see the abandoned pets sort of go through their thoughts of, you know, abandonment and their feelings of it and then potential finding a new family. It, it, it's, it's really quite lovely. And I really do enjoy that aspect of it. It's also hilarious throughout. Um, so yeah, if you are looking for something that you can 100% watch with your kids and both of you can enjoy on multiple, multiple levels, that's not dumbed down, that's not overly elevated either, but just works really, really well, make sure you check out Secret Life of Pets. It is the first in a franchise. I will say I was not a huge fan of the sequel, but it definitely does not need to be watched if you don't want to. Um, this works perfectly as a standalone, totally encompasses like everything you could want in a storyline. And it's just really lovely and enjoyable and a lot of fun. So again, Secret Life of Pets available on DVD and Blu-ray via our ClueNet service. Okay, so those are my two recommendations that we're using to kick off our August. If you have any recommendations that you would like to share about dog-centric films that are particularly fun or funny, please recommend those below. There'll be lots of fun to shuffle through, I'm sure. If you have any recommendations for themes that you'd like me to uh, focus on in the future, I definitely would love help with that. Um, these are always such fun to put together and it really does give me a chance to delve into our catalog. If the two films I mentioned today aren't your cup of tea, make sure you still check out all of our different video services, whether it's Cleavenet and you're looking for physical DVDs and Blu-ray, or if you're looking for streaming options via Hoopla, Digital, or Canopy, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of films available to you for free with your library card. You will 100% be able to find something that speaks to you. Uh, so with that, as always, thank you so, so much for joining me and hopefully I will see you next week. Bye-bye.